Let's see if it works this time, folks. It's like, um, I always say this, but it's like when you teach a class and you have to wait. <laughs> if anyone has been a teacher before, that, that sort of awkward time um, where you get there too early and you have to pretend it's not super awkward. That's what I feel like when I do these and I'm trying to get people to join. Let's see. Just trying to make the technology work. I'm able to join. Let's try it again. Audrey. Hey, Ryan. There you are. Yeah, it might be my fault. My phone might be too old for this. <laughs> no worries. No worries. I'm happy you're you're here. I clicked the button a bunch of times. I did restart so that there wasn't that awkward, um, like five minutes of me uh, desperately trying to make things work. <laughs> I, was, I was saying to the nobody that was uh, in this room um, that there's that that sort of like awkward um, teacher moment. Um, I don't have you, ever, have you ever taught like a class? I'm sure you've done like presentations and things, but. Um, have you ever taught a class? No, I have never taught like a formal class. Yeah, I've done presentations for things, but not taught a class. Um, so I haven't had to like live through that discomfort where you're waiting for someone to like volunteer an answer after you ask a question. <laughs> yeah, well, I think of the, when you make the mistake, especially in the first day of class, mm. uh, getting to like the lecture hall uh, 15 minutes early and you like try to do small talk with folks and it like never lands well. So you have to stare at your papers like you're pretending that you're preparing for class, but really you're just too embarrassed to deal with it. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, I guess yeah, I'll do introductions to, to start. Um, so my name for, for the folks that are in the room, I think I know some of the folks that are in the room, but uh, my name is Sean Watkins. I'm the owner of Athenium Comic Art. Uh, we represent uh, many fantastic uh, Indian small press cartoonists. Um, I sell their original art. So uh, feel free to go take a look at the website. There's lots of really great folks, some of which will be at A2CAF. Uh, mm -hmm. the weekend. Uh, joining me today is my um, co colleague, colleague friend. Yeah, colleague friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Audrey, uh, Audrey, the production library at the Ann Arbor, librarian, excuse me, you're not a library. Um, librarian at the Ann Arbor District Library. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about A2CAF. We're going to be talking about Audrey and uh, your career. Um, as well as, you know, uh, a few other things. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to have this conversation with you. Um, the reason we're chatting, of course, is that we've been working on this little thing for um, over a year now. It's pretty yeah. amazing. I was looking at our, our uh, uh, correspondence over uh, the past many, many months. And I don't know, for some reason, I thought, thought that, uh, you know, we've been doing this for like six months but it's been it's been a while <laughs> yeah it's been it's been a long project which is not a bad thing it's probably good that it feels like less time right yeah yeah it feels like we just started um it's kind of terrifying that it's it's actually happening I know. but uh it's super excited so uh our, our our show on saturday october 7th mm -hmm. is called Arbor comics arts festival small and indie press mm -hmm. um there's also uh, a two calf in the summer. We can talk mm -hmm. about that uh, later, um, and it'll be at the downtown uh, branch of uh, the Ann Arbor District Library, um, and it's from eleven to five p.m. Right? That's right. Yep, that's right. Yep. Uh, um, we hope everyone can make mm -hmm. it. Uh, we have some wonderful folks that we'll talk about a little bit later on in the conversation, but. 
um, I'm excited to talk to you um, yeah. about the show, um, as well as uh, your your career as a librarian. I think uh, a nice place yeah. for us to start would be, um, well, first, what exactly is a production librarian? Uh, sure. So, um, yeah, these are things you don't know about me, Sean. So this is... <laughs> <laughs> I should know this. Right? But... <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, so a production librarian is just, uh, it's really just like what we call librarians kind of at the library. Um, it is like, there's some like, like weird internal like jargon that's left over. Like we used to kind of have like youth librarians and adult librarians. Um, and then over time, we've just all become production librarians, except for like the one librarian that's over in archives is still an archivist. So. It, it just means we uh, produce stuff for the library. So some of that's sh like sh events like A2CAF and some of that's, you know, community partnerships. It's ordering books. It's all sorts of things depending and everybody's job is a little bit different. So it mm -hmm. kind of just depends on who, uh, who you are and where you kind of are situated within the library. And so what is your area of focus then? Um, so, so I actually, I am a tools librarian. So I work on our tools collection. Um, so we have one of the oldest like library of things collections in the country, I believe. Hmm. Um, it started back, started back in 2005 before I was at the library. Um, and we rent, not rent, we check out things to patrons like sewing machines, telescopes, guitars, um, different art, like Wacom's antiques, um, lots of different things are available to check out. And so I'm one of the people that works on selecting and maintaining that collection. Um, and I'm also in charge of the art print collection. So mm -hmm. I get to select the artwork that we allow people to check out for um, eight weeks at a time, which is a super fun thing too. So I came to the library specifically because um, I wanted to work with uh, non-traditional collections, <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> Is that, I mean, before coming to Ann Arbor, I had never heard of the library allowing me to take out mm -hmm. um, such, such objects. Yeah. Um, actually, I worked at the um, um, uh, Bowling Green State Sorry. University Sorry. Pop Culture Library, and we had a lot of objects. Mm -hmm. um, you know, weird, weird things like a Vulcan harp and, and whatever. Um, but we, we, you could come and like, we would give it to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it away. Um, is it, is it a unique thing or is, are there, are there a bunch of libraries that do that? Um, I think it's becoming more and more common. Um, libraries are like a really trick, like tricky thing to generalize about because every library is kind of like tailored to suit its own community. Um, but I do think like li like libraries of things are it, that idea is spreading and becoming more common. Um, I'm just a weirdo, and when I like you know was trying to figure out what to do with my life, I had like read an article about libraries circulating non traditional things, and that included like American Girl dolls and like some library in in the uh, Upper Peninsula that circulated like fishing equipment, and I was like, that's what I want to do with my life. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I went to library school for specifically was I wanted to work in non-traditional collections, oh, wow. which in re retrospect, as like an older person, I'm like, you, what a wild thing to have done to like read one article and be like, there it is. This like entire, this like extremely niche thing that like not all libraries are super, super open to depending on your budget. Right. Um, so I lucked out. Also, there was a lot of luck involved with me landing on my feet a little bit there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's that's amazing. Uh, you're talking to someone who has a, a master's degree in pop culture. So, oh, so I yeah. understand <laughs> decisions that we made in our in our youth. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've landed on our yeah. feet. So yes. that's, all, yeah. that's all that matters. So what do you really love about your job? Like, what's one of the things that you love most about it? Um, um, so I feel very, very fortunate to work at a library where I get to do, to work with these non-traditional collections. Um, and actually like our art print collection uh, is from the seventies. Um, so we've been kind of 
the library has like a long history of kind of thinking outside of the box when it comes to what we um, lend to the community. Um, like, so like working with the R prints is one of my favorite things, like selecting the work for it um, is super fun because I get to like look for lo local artists um, who might be a good fit for the collection. And then just like, I get to like look through a lot of art to, to curate for that collection, right? Um, so it's always very fun to like think about the broad picture of like the collection and how a piece might fit in or not. Um, so, or like what people like, um, like what the collection is missing. Like there's a long history in that collection of like landscapes. Um, and when I started buying from, when we've started buying from more local artists, then we've added more uh, like portraitures in. So like, what is it like? And then, you know, you want to be thoughtful with like what people you're including in your collection and like what people, whose work are you including? Whose work, who, who are those people depicting and how are they depicted and all that stuff. Um, so it's all like very, it gets all theoretical very quickly, but it, it's fun, I think, so. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds that sounds amazing. And I, yeah, I just it blew my mind that you'd be able to, you know, uh, uh, take a, a printout like you yeah. could a book. I just never really had considered that as a as an option. And you know, I I, I as a young person, I had lots of posters and mm -hmm. things on my walls. Mm -hmm. To think that you know anybody could go in with a library card and and kind of borrow those is is pretty pretty amazing. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons, uh, you know, I, I love our library system mm -hmm. is that we, we do such, we do, you all do think outside the box yeah. and, and offer a variety of experiences, events, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and ways to use the library as, as, as I'm sure you are aware of the, the ways in which folks use libraries is constantly changing. And you all seem to be ahead of the game a lot of times. I, I think, you know, we're really fortunate to work for people that encourage us to think, to like be creative and think outside of the box. And then like the other reality here that's worth acknowledging is that we work for a system that has the budget to allow us to take risks. <laughs> right. um, just to like be really honest about the landscape of libraries. Um, some of the stuff we do isn't like we're able to take risks that other libraries aren't always able to take because um, we have the, the budget, it, you know. Um, but also, I think there's like an environment aspect to it as well. Um, we, uh, I work with a lot of really amazing creative people and we're allowed to be um, really amazing and creative in our jobs. And um, I think that's what keeps us um, kind of forward thinking. And yeah always kind of like evolving because um, I work with a lot of really fantastic people like the people I work with is probably actually the thing that I love the most about my job <laughs> yeah yeah I'd, I'd be curious to hear from you what what you see as some challenges for mm -hmm. librarians in the the current climate um, yeah you know we can we can talk about as it relates to, to books, mm -hmm. um, but just to hear your thoughts in general. Um, it's like a big question because it's one of those questions that I feel like connects because community. So libraries serve communities. So like all the stuff kind of inherently connects back upwards. Uh, my cat's saying hello. Oh. Um, <laughs> connects back upwards to like what's going on um, politically. Mm -hmm. So that's always like tricky to talk about, right? Sure. Um, but uh, so I think there's like a couple things we could talk about with this with this question, right? Like we have the book bans that are happening, mm -hmm. um, but I think there's also like a fair question of like the way that our, our culture and um, society is thinking about like sa things like safety nets. Um, one of the things that drew, drew me to librarianship was this idea of wanting to give back to my community um and it really was a like li libraries really attracted me for a couple reasons and um a big thing was, was like there was a year where i lived 
uh, in Chicago and did not make a lot of money. Um, so I didn't have, I chose not to have the internet. Um, so I did all my grad school applications at the library. Oh, wow. um, and like, I also, when I was in that situation, like realized like li the library is one of the few places you can go in a town or a city, for example, and not have to purchase something to sit there right. um, or to spend any amount of time there. Like you can just come to the library and use the space, um, which when you think about it um, is really important uh, where we live with like a Northern climate where it gets cold in the winter. Like you can't just sit on a bench outside for hours in December. Right. Um, and like, that's that like, community support aspect where you know the library can't be everything to everyone but we can be something to quite a few people um and what that thing is looks different to different people um is one of the things that i think is really special about libraries um i've lost my train of thought with this question a little bit <laughs> you know i think emphasis on community really connects to to a2 calf yeah. um and what I think is is really special about the the library system in Ann Arbor, you know, is this it's an affluent area, um, mm -hmm. but there are folks that that need the the library. I mean, we all need the library, but <laughs> we all provide many services to to everyone in the community, not just you know a specific mm -hmm. uh, group of folks. people. Yeah. That's so important. I think the the evolution of libraries and sort of what they you know how how they connect to the community um, is 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 you know so important, right? To to remain relevant uh, and to adapt and to have that as sort of a core part of the mission of, of really connecting with with folks. Um, you know, I just I just think you all are doing a, a really spectacular job. Yeah, I think it. I know that I I, I thought about this a lot when I was in grad school. Um, and I think part of why I really enjoy working where I do is because we don't just think of information as something you find in like books or on the internet or in a database. Like right. information is also like the experience of being able to check out a sewing machine or a telescope and experience seeing Jupiter or the moon, like at your house in your backyard, yeah. like, um, and having access to that experience um, because we can't all afford to just on a whim buy a telescope or, think like maybe I want to like maybe a tablet like a drawing tablet would like help me improve my art practice but like do you have them it's a lot of money to spend on a thing that is not like you it could be going out on a limb so being able to provide that to people yeah. um, like information doesn't have to be like a fact right it can also be that experience of trying the thing Thing or coming to your library and getting to connect with people over a love for comics or a love for, um, you know, sewing or like the curiosity of like, what, what is Taiwanese drumming? Like, I'll go look at this. I'll go attend this event and find out. Um, yeah. You know, there's a, a um, it's a, it's that like curiosity and like view of information as like a living thing. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that like connects people as well as I think part of why we are so good at, we're so good at our jobs. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. Um, but also why we think outside of the box because it's not just thinking of information as, um, books on a shelf and like yeah. also to be fair to libraries with a smaller budget or that don't have like a large university, like also <laughs> in the same city as them, like the core uh, mission of having information be available to people is still really important. Like we do still need information on how to like apply for jobs or use word in some cases, right? Like that's yeah. something that some people struggle with um, or just like have access to a computer is like huge for a lot of people. And that's a thing that a lot of libraries are able to provide. Um, so I, I I think libraries in general are really, I, I, really important, um, which is something I'm just realizing I don't get to talk about a lot with people because <laughs> I work <laughs> in a library. So you're just talking yeah. about people who also are in the same little brain boat. 
Yeah, no, I, you know, it, it, whenever we, we talk about about um, this library and, and, and libraries as, as sort of the, the, um, the function of libraries in society today, you know, I, I think I should be going to the library more, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I should be participating more. And, and I think, you know, even just the events that you all put on, I mean, all of the time. Yeah. So, you know, just bringing so much culture to the mm -hmm. to the area um, and for it to be free mm -hmm. um, is so, so amazing. Yes. Um, yeah. You have had mentioned uh, a love uh, love of comics, people's love of comics. So mm -hmm. I'd be curious to hear, we've been putting on a big comics show. Mm -hmm. um, what is, what, what's your connection to, to comics? Uh, um, so, oh, here's my other cat. Also, I have other the other cats coming to say hello. This is Tuxley. Uh, um, Tuxley, that's a great name. <laughs> thank you. Um, so I came... I'm trying to think of like what exactly is my history with comics. Um, and I guess like the simplest answer is that like I have been a reader my whole life mm -hmm. and I've been a pretty like non, like I'm a pretty like, if, if it's there, I'll read it sort of reader. So I never really encountered that weirdness around graphic novels um, mm -hmm. that it, it seems like a lot of other people do, or I have heard tell of this. <laughs> um, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right like um and then when i was in middle school and high school i re like i really got into it when i got into anime and manga um mm -hmm. like i think a lot of like or maybe plenty of people my age let's not over generalize <laughs> it's a lot um, of people it's, it's a lot of people. people i mean there's something about like manga really specifically i think that speaks to like a, a thing a integral part of being a teenager uh really well yeah um they had they have a, a real good lock on that experience um not like and obviously that's also a huge genre but a lot of the books that were available in like the 2000s uh were very like teen focused mm -hmm. um right. which is what i was reading um and then and i just have always kind of been aware of graphic novels and so I just always was like if I saw one that was supposed to be good I would read it <laughs> like um and I, I there was a weird point when I was in college where I was like I will read all of the x-men and I did go back and read all of the giant x-men books that were available at the time like a, a one summer where I was like I'm gonna do it I'm gonna <laughs> learn crisp Claremont back to front <laughs> and, yeah and I did Wow, um, I'm learning. You. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why, but it was just this. I think I, on some level, it was like this, like protective urge to be like, no one's gonna gatekeep me. I'll read them all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can respect that. Um, so then, yeah, and I think I don't know. I just have always read them. I'm trying to think of like what's the pivotal one where I was like, this is it. Yeah, like, this yeah. is a thing I love. Do you have? Uh, or an early memory of a specific manga or a comic that mm. I was just we were talking about another n a nerd nerdy comic group that I'm in. Yeah, and I think about like what was the like because there's a difference between like the first the first one you remember reading or the first one yeah. you remember reading by getting yourself versus the one that um, really uh, affected you um, yeah. as a reader. Um, yeah, where you're like this is a bigger thing, or like this connect to like a bigger experience yeah um i'm trying to think which because like i would also i'm also like because i i was such a reader i would also read a lot of the like manga that i watched the anime for um yeah like you know um but in terms like i think one of the comics that first really resonated with me that was like i'm more of like an adult level actually was hark a vagrant uh, okay. Kate Beaton's web web comic really like Kate Beaton. Who is that? I don't right. know that. <laughs> who is she? <laughs> award um, known to yeah. known to people. <laughs> right. I mean, she's amazing, um, and her sense of humor is like so on point. Um, and then around the same time, I also my a friend introduced me to Nimona, and I read mm -hmm. that in a day, in like one day, and then happened to meet 
Nate at like a comic event in Chicago and I think scared him a little bit when I was like, I read this whole thing in a day and it was amazing and I loved it so much. And they're like, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, that happens. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it does. Uh, but that was a, that was also a really one that stuck with me early on in my like early twenties when I was like living by myself just after college, like trying to figure out what I was doing with my life. Um, both of those feel like very formative and like got me more into like American comics more so than like anime and manga which like once I was living by myself and didn't have a lot of money in Chicago it was harder to get a hold of those copies because like they're ten dollars a book and then you go through the book like that like I read them in like a day so like to be able to have access to like Kate's comics and uh, Nate's comics online was like kind of a game changer because it was like free like you could read a lot of it for free and then like once i had money i supported them also but like <laughs> yeah 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 that's so we, we could that's a, another conversation and i think but you know this idea of um you know putting your art out mm -hmm. there free uh in this in this capitalistic society yeah using that as a way to get your work out there uh, and finding um other ways to monetize mm -hmm. Um, creating art is really, it, 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 it's a fascinating conversation that's complicated. Um, yeah. Lots of thoughts about it. Um, but yeah, it, I think it, it's really complicated and yeah. Yeah. It's just really complicated. And I think it's hard as a creator too, because you do have to create. And I think it's, it, I, I feel like the idea of just creating and then like squirreling it away and never showing it to someone also feels weird. So it's yeah. like, yeah. why wouldn't you put it out there and like get things? Cause I think especially early on a big, I imagine a big part of it would be like the encouragement you might get from your community. And like how, like how else do you know if you have something that anyone cares about? Yeah. 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 Right. Well, and it's interesting that the, the, the early 2000 ish yeah. era, the uh, internet was a different place. <laughs> web, yeah. The internet, we were, we were naive then. There was the hope. still a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. You know, you know, um, but let's, let's shift gears a little bit. Um, because I think there'll be many opportunities for folks to be starstruck at a two cap. And, yes. um, we got quite a, quite a spectacular lineup um, for, for people. Um, but why don't you tell us, if you don't mind, um, a little bit about what HUCAF Small Indie Press is? Sure. So um, it's a show we're putting on at the Ann Arbor District Library. Um, and the idea is to kind of showcase the possibilities um, uh, of this comic book storytelling medium uh right uh particularly we focused on small and indie press because um a lot of artists come up through self-publishing and a lot of the stories that you are available i think through self-publishing or like small press publishing um i think they tend to be a little bit more like uh raw and intimate in a way that i think is worth like celebrating and lifting up mm -hmm. So uh, I think that was kind of like part of the impetus of this particular event was highlighting these kind of uh, works that you're not going to find at like on the bookshelf at Barnes and Noble. I almost said borders, but that, you know, I was back <laughs> in the 2000s. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I love that, that, um, I mean, you said raw and, and sort of uplifting, like the, the thing that really brought me to small indie press world was that how much I connected mm -hmm. with myself in kind of a visceral way. Yeah. Um, it was just, you know, as, as a, as a kid growing up, um, you know, in the late nineties, early two thousands, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, I was mostly reading mainstream comic books mm -hmm. and there's nothing, nothing wrong with that at all. But I wasn't really aware of this whole other world yeah. of folks who were self-publishing. Um, I didn't really have an opportunity to to see it, you know. And it wasn't until I don't even know my late twenties, early thirties, mm -hmm. I, I really started to dive into it. Mm -hmm. And you know, to to read a book 
um, that, you know, a, a, a floppy that somebody put together that's so emotionally um, compelling, uh, mm-hmm. whether someone's telling a story about their own life in, mm-hmm. in comic form or, um, you know, doing something fictional, I, I just, I, I decided that I wanted to read things that would make me feel something. And I, mm-hmm. I always say, right, like you, I feel like an artist has accomplished accomplished something if they have made me feel mm-hmm. something. Right? Um, and even if I don't like something, I still you yeah. know, give credit for the fact that, that folks have put so much of themselves into it, especially mm-hmm. comics that, you know, um, folks spend so much time on the craft and putting these mm-hmm. things together. And then us fans were like, do, 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 just yeah. like flying through it. Right? Yeah. You know, um, I think that that in this space of this this world that we're in, where it's like more and more and more, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's really, really important to slow down and celebrate these folks who who are giving us joy, who are who are, who are helping us work through whatever um, you know yeah. issues may be going on in our lives. Um, you know, helping us think about the world in a different way. You know, I, I often tell cartoonists that, I, like, I think they're like, you know, wizards. They're they're magicians. They're able to to do something that's so powerful, that's so meaningful. Um, you know, to, to the point where it it literally can change someone's life. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm I'm really excited about a 2 calf is that we we're slowing down and we're giving we're highlighting these these folks who you know um who who are every day you know making these these texts um that that folks love yeah. um and i you know i think it's it's great that we've been able to collect such a a, a range of folk with different styles and experiences and um you know uh, different points of their career. It's just really, it's really, it's really exciting. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this show. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Cause it's also, you know, to bring it back to like what the library does, like part of this is also uplifting local comic artists, right. Yeah. And giving them a chance to put their work out to their community. Um, which is also really, really important um because i do one of the things i love about the show is when you get to like walk the floor and you discover all these people that you didn't know were like right around you the whole time and like see their work and it's it's often not often it's always amazing um to see what people can do people are so talented Talented. Everybody is, but you know. we, we've discussed it. We're, we're sometimes to to a point where we're like super jealous how yes. talented people are. Um, and you know, I, I it's so fascinating. You know, I've been doing Athenium for two plus years now. I've lived in Ann Arbor for a while, and um, you know, I'm I'm with a two calf. I'm starting to just run into people mm-hmm. randomly um, who are cartoonists that I had no yeah. idea. Whose work, what I you know, is amazing, and yeah. you know, I I love that we can be a small part of helping to bring um, you know a variety of communities together. Yeah. That's my yeah. hope for Way Too Cap as yeah. well. Um, I wonder if you could speak. You you've uh, you've been with the library for a while. Um, a Two Cap is um, you know an iteration mm-hmm. of. Uh, the summer version of A2CAF. I wonder if you could speak briefly about the history of A2CAF. You know, we want to celebrate both, you know, the the summer version of A2CAF as well as um, the small and indie press yeah. version. Yeah, sure. Um, so A2CAF um, is a show that has kind of been, it's been knocking around longer than I've been with the library. Mm-hmm. Um, so it started as a little event with Chelsea, the Chelsea district library and then moved to Ann Arbor where it became A2CAF um, and the summer show is like a very family friendly show um, which is like a huge selling point I think um, because especially with mainstream comics that are much more like teen and adult oriented having a space where parents who love comics can like celebrate comics with their children I think is really special and like not 
like uh, not there are not a lot of cons that like cater to families right, right. Mm -hmm. um it's also like the you know we have a whole summer game and it's the first big event of our summer summer madness um it's a big it's a big, big thing in Arbor, folks yes we'll there, if you're but... from ann arbor you know <laughs> <laughs> um so like that's also it's also just uh really well placed within our summer uh mm -hmm. summer reading program um to kind of elevate it a little bit more uh so so i guess that's like a really high level top cliff notes level thing but um i think the show so the show hit its 10th year in 2019 mm. the summer show um so it's been a, like obviously we took a couple years off during the pandemic um so it's been around for a little while um and this this version of the show was that acknowledgement that there's like a a world of comics that is um also important for teen and adults, right? But that is not, that content is not always like necessarily um, whatever everyone wants their kids to be around. So it's this is just our way to give like our adult audience a little bit more of like that graphic novel experience mm -hmm. um, without compromising the family friendly atmosphere of the summer show, which is also really yeah. important. Like I think it is really important to you know, share the love of comics with kids because it's such a unique and like special medium. Yeah, you know, and it's it's funny. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you know this about me, but I, I sometimes I'm a judgmental person, <laughs> and I you know n didn't give kind of the YA um, or or kind of children's uh, comics much attention for mm -hmm. a very long time until mm -hmm. I had. And um, you know, reading Dogman mm. with my my kid, mm -hmm. where it literally it, it it's kids, you know, um, it's presented as kids creating comics, yeah. right? It's sort of this like yeah. narrative, um, and every book has you know how to draw the characters yeah. in the in the. Of it. And I like so fell in love with those books um, when I and I thought you know I'm not, I'm not gonna like these at all. Yeah. And so you know, the, connecting us to A2 Calf in the summer. I attended for the first time there, you know, uh, the, the first time it came back from, yeah. from the pandemic but the yeah. time. Um, and I loved it. Mm -hmm. the, the, the energy is so positive. It like reminds you why you love comics. You see kids falling, them, falling over themselves yeah. to talk to these heroes, you know, to be able to do that, you know, as a, as a service to the community, I think is so powerful because you know, these kids could go off and decide like, oh, hey, I can, I can draw, I can mm -hmm. do this too, right? And, and you know, I think the, some of those of us, you know, who, who as, a, as a kid, I like, I really love drawing. Mm -hmm. I didn't really have opportunities to see folks that were drawing the things that I was interested yeah. in, right? Yeah. It, a lot of landscapes in Northern New York, <laughs> right? Which are beautiful, yeah. but I, I, it's not my my interests. So, you know, I highly recommend folks who are attending A2 CAF uh, this weekend, come back in the summer and check it out because it's, it's a blast. And I'll tell you, those cartoonists that come to, to the summer version love A2 mm -hmm. CAF. Um, and a lot of them have come back year after year. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah um, we're very fortunate to have, um, I think we do, we like to treat our artists well. So we, we always like, cause we like them to come back. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that, that's, um, I'm particularly impressed with how, how you treat the, the folks that come and, and, and table at these shows. Um, you know, I think, um, folks, uh, cartoonists are used to not getting a lot. <laughs> Having to pay for things, um, pay for tables, right? Um, you all have have really been wonderful in terms of um, you, you know providing and uh, making a I think a positive experience for for cartoons. Yeah, and to go back to the idea of like supporting um, like your local creators, right? Um, I think that part of what we try and do with the show is have a people at like a range 
of points in their career. Um, mm -hmm. And like that includes people who are really early in their career who maybe don't have a lot of experience tabling or where like the idea of like a hundred dollar table fee is like a lot of money for them yeah. um, to give them the opportunity to be able to table somewhere is really important too. Right. Um, in terms of like helping them develop their career. Right. 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 What are you most excited about for this show? <sighs> I feel like that's such a tricky question to ask the organizer because uh, the organizers are like for it to be done and for nothing terrible to happen for the building to survive the event without being lit on fire. Yeah. <laughs> um, not that that has ever happened, but to maybe not get trapped in the elevator for 30 minutes, which did happen to me in one show. Okay. So like, yeah, the staff elevator is a little it's usually fine but some it does happen that people get trapped in it and i should have known better but you know <laughs> well let's avoid that yes yeah i had my cell phone on me so it was fine but um i think that i mean it's always i think the thing that's like really rewarding is getting to see all of the patrons who come um and who are so excited to like engage with the artists and the artists are often I think I haven't been to a lot of cons, but I think it pleasantly surprised and pleased by the people who come to our events because a lot of the people that come are like genuinely curious and like want to interact with the creators um, and like ask them questions about their work and like, you know, all sorts of things. Um, so getting to see all the people, like you do it for the, the community and like the people who are attending and the creators who are there. Um, mm -hmm and hope that they have a good, good time. So, yeah. which is maybe why we, we treat the artists so nice, because we have the most direct feedback from them, right? <laughs> right, right, yeah. I guess we, um, we should, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say that we should talk a little bit about what's, what's unique about this show, um, thinking about um, one of our headliners, Rosemary mm -hmm. Valero Conn. Um, uh, so excited. Well, she's amazing. I, I love everything about Rosemary. But also, uh, she put together the poster for the yeah. show. Yeah. She, and um, she's having a mini comic that we commissioned debut at the show. Which is like know. Really the most exciting thing on, on earth to me. Mm -hmm. um, that was a that was a fun process. Uh, I'm glad that we could make it work with her busy schedule. Yeah. Um, but I, so I'm really excited that the, the, the comics will be there. Um, mm -hmm. Folks will get them for free, which yes. is yeah. very, very amazing. Um, but also if you attend a 2 calf, if you go down into the basement, mm -hmm. you'll see all of the original pages, mm -hmm. minus one, <laughs> minus one that, that was done digitally. But Rosemary um, uh, was very gracious mm -hmm. in both um, um, putting together these, this comic for, for the library, mm -hmm. but also um, by uh, creating the, the pages traditionally yeah. for the first time since she was, I think, in college. Um, so it's, it's really, really special. Um, uh, we, we put the pages up mm -hmm. uh, last week, and yes. they look spectacular. Yeah. yeah. I, her work is amazing. Like, it seeing her work in person was such a weird experience i i feel like because i don't know what i thought, thought happened in my brain between like art being submitted and like being published uh but they look so amazing and like obviously professional but like they're just seeing them in person was like more affecting than i thought it would be um because she's so talented and i there is something about art that i have noticed some artists that I've worked with that like the the thing something sometimes gets lost in translation so seeing the original is like really special yeah we're so lucky that we're able to do that um and I it will be up through the month of November if people can't make it this this weekend yeah. for whatever reason and like you, you gotta see it I I I am very fortunate in that I see amazing pages mm -hmm. all the time um, and when what you're saying is is right, they they don't translate m most of the time. Most of the time, 
time. Like, I don't think people, people don't really think about it, but yeah. it doesn't fully translate into printed form. Mm -hmm. And when you look at those originals, uh, you, you just see the, the heart and soul that was poured mm -hmm. into, into these comics. And, and Rosemary, I mean, blue, everything she touches yeah. is spectacular. But like, oh gosh, this yeah. is, this is something to be seen. So if, if anything, yeah, uh, come to come see it. To see those pages. Also, the the gallery space that you all have is is gorgeous oh, too. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you to say. <laughs> yeah, no, I you know I remember you talking like we put it in the basement. And I was like, okay, we <laughs> shove it in the basement with the rest of our secrets, and no one will have to look. Yeah, and it's it's like a legit like nice gallery. Thank you. Space. So I think it looks beautiful. I posted a couple of pictures on social media, but again, it doesn't do it justice unless you can go there and see the brush strokes um, in those in those yeah. pages. Super yeah. excited. There's something about the scan process of scanning things for publication that it, it just kind of flattens it. Like you lose that sense of like this is a thing that someone like made with their hands, and I think that's what's so special. And you can yeah. see all the like you said brush stroke not all of them, but you can see brush strokes. You can see that it's a thing that was made by a person. It's really amazing. Like, I can't believe that a human made those pages to some yeah. extent. Well, it's funny too, because I'm a big fan of seeing the pro process. Oh, like I, yeah. I love yeah. the smudges. I love the um, white out. Mm -hmm. I love the mm -hmm. uh, pan panels that are posted over top of yeah. the panel. Yeah. And hers like pristine like i i, I um yeah. <laughs> i would have expected someone who has worked uh digitally for so long to be you know like a it's it's spectacular yeah. it's hard to put into words just how how moving those pages are especially you know um just just knowing that that physical piece mm -hmm. ha doesn't exist for a lot of the, the laura deans you know, the, yeah the, it was mostly digital. She did um, um, prelims in pencil, mm -hmm. so the the pencil exist, but the those beautiful final pages, you know, just, yeah. just um, so that's really special. Um, our other headliners are pretty <laughs> great you too. Maybe I've heard of uh, uh, Julian Tamaki is going to be there. Um, her book Roaming yeah. is out. Yeah, now, uh, I her... have to like, like prepare myself to to engage with certain books. It's like, it's sitting next to me. It's on the, the bed, my bed the table. And I'm like, I'm like not emotionally quite there. Yeah. Uh, because uh, her work is so important to me and mm. my, my family, children's books, um, you know, the, the many books that she's done over the years. Um, yeah. This summer is, 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 you know, I've, I said this before in other um, chats, but it, I, part of why I started Athenium was so that I could afford a page yeah. from, from summer. Um, and now I have, well, that's the other thing. So Jillian's coming. Yes. Uh, but also um, I have original pages from this one summer that um, will be at, at my table and folks, anyone can come over and take yeah. a look at those, those beautiful pages. So that's pretty. Yeah. Exciting. Her and Mariko do such beautiful work. Um, Mariko helps. She did the English script adaptation of um, Louisa Now and Then, which it, I think just did a small run in the U.S. And I happened to pick up a copy, and it's just a really beautiful, amazing comic uh, that I would encourage lots, of, like anyone, to read. Um, yeah, Mariko's are Mariko particularly. Her scripts always seem to resonate with me. I'm like this one and this one, and then I'm like, oh, these are all by Mariko. Um, well, and. <laughs> And she she does mainstream yeah. work too. Yeah. I mean, she she has a uh, she wrote a novel, all sorts of things. Um, but like Mariko's like Harley Quinn books are really yeah. good, right? Yeah. Like yeah, it, 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 this pair. That's why I'm so excited yes. to see them back there again. It's and that's why I need to prepare myself because you probably I, I You're probably right <laughs> prepared for, for for this experience. Uh, and I you know I don't I, I don't know about you, but I sometimes have to pace myself with books mm -hmm. because. Like I get so like uh, like a mild depression sets in when I finish a book wow. because then I more book. Um, so I'm, I'm getting myself ready for that. I should probably read it before this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> I have a copy too. And I keep, for the same reason, I keep looking at it and being like, not yet. Cause I 
I feel like this is the type of bush. This is the type of book I like ambush myself with. I'm like, I'm ready. I'm fine. And then like half an hour later, you're like halfway through like weeping on your couch. Like, yeah, yeah. My I'll never be young again or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're very excited for, for Julian as well. Yes. And then there's another person that folks may have heard mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. Jaime Hernandez is yes. going to be joining us, which is like, I mean, all, they're all mind blowing. But, yeah. You know, someone with a career in um, Indian small press and, and really kind of represents mm -hmm. <laughs> small press in a lot of ways. Um, it's such a such a joy to be able to to have Jaime come and, and, and join us, especially on the heels of the, the 40th anniversary yeah. of, of love. Gets, um, which I am embarrassed to say that it, it took me a very long time to to read mm -hmm. because I was so intimidated by. I mean, like I'm a, um, a completionist. Mm. Uh, at least I was before I had kids, and <laughs> I remember, like I'm gonna have to read like 40 years of comics. Um, and everyone tells you just jump in wherever, just jump in mm -hmm. wherever it's gonna be. Or here are the main, the big stories that will, yeah. that are you know that folks particularly like. And I was like, no, I gotta start from page one, and that's what I did and then I started mm -hmm. jumping because oh my god it's like the best thing mm -hmm. ever. um uh, so uh, we're we're very fortunate to have my yeah. as well yeah i i'm i was blown away by the people who agreed to come headline um our little show that we haven't done before uh, it go it goes to show i honestly you know I, I i was at cxc this 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 weekend and folks are been talking about the show and they're asking how we we booked these people and i said we asked them <laughs> you know and you know they were flying out there or whatever too like, yeah but, yeah you know um it, if you want to put together a show build a community uh, be really nice to people and mm -hmm. ask them nicely and respectfully and you'd be surprised what you can you know Get you done. can put together yeah um is there anything else about a2 cat that we want to share with with our audience tonight that's a good question <laughs> um i feel like we've covered a lot of it um, yeah we'll take a look at that list of you know we have the three big headliners mm -hmm. but like there are folks coming in from yeah. all over the country, um, you know, folks who are just starting their careers, mm -hmm. people who've been around for a long time, folks that have won, won Eisner Awards. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 going to be just amazing mm -hmm. to, to connect with these people. And what I particularly like about, for those of you who may have not been to an indie show, um, is that they're really intimate. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's a small community and, mm -hmm. and the artists are there to connect with you mm -hmm. um, and talk to them and, and ask them yeah. questions. I mean, buy their stuff too, yes. but yeah. it's a really special experience um, that I wish I had, had more opportunities to go to when I was younger. Yeah. Um, I think it's why I like putting on these big shows so much because there are, uh, especially the way that our culture, I think, conceives of artists we like imagine them off in their little like workshops and artist studios like working away um and we don't have a lot of opportunities to meet people that are to meet any artist really i was about to say except for super famous people but that's also a lie if you are from like rural michigan or whatever right like yeah uh, uh so i think it's a really it's it's a really cool thing we're able to offer people also on a practical note there is no football game this <laughs> saturday so parking will not be horrific so just yes. putting it out there also important for people to know <laughs> yeah yeah uh, things that i, I think about that. as the event organizer yeah and i you know i hadn't um i have put together lots of events in my 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 life but i, I have not spent a lot of time in uh big football towns. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, you know, that that's that was an interesting part of the process is yeah. waiting for the, the, the schedule to come out. out so that we can actually get it. Um but yeah. So I feel like we've made a really good case for folks to come mm -hmm. join us uh, at two cap. We're that. we'll be there. We're really nice. We're really yeah. cool. Yeah, and I'm tabling, which is super yeah. exciting. I don't get, get to table very often. Um, I don't, especially in an event that I've helped put up together. <laughs> but you all have a well-oiled machine. I keep I'm, I keep saying to 
to to to Audrey. I'm like, do you do you need me to like move boxes or like put you know put tables you know move tables around? And you're you're like, we're like a real place. <laughs> we have like people that work here. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. I typically it's me and one other person that's doing this. I think that's a, a, important to acknowledge that it's it's really a team effort mm-hmm. that's gone in to putting this event together, and and folks have put a lot of hours into into everything from us brainstorming, but also mm-hmm. you know getting the comics together, the printing of things, like all of the the design of things. Um, yep. Truly, uh, we we could not do this with just the the, the two of us. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, so yeah. Um, is there anything else that we think? I feel like we're we've hit most of the think, we've hit most yeah, of the yeah, point. we've hit some really big things, and now you know more um, about, about my career as a librarian, which is a thing that I forget to talk to people about. Uh, oh, and I guess I should say uh, so. I'll have because uh, I can plug myself because oh, yeah. it's as much. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll have Jillian's art um, mm-hmm. there for sale too. Um, some of it's fairly expensive, but actually there's also sketches as well. We, uh, I partnered with the Beguiling, which is a, a super uh, amazing shop um, in Toronto, like the, the indie comic shop. Um, and we were able to, to get those pages here um, for folks to look at and maybe purchase uh, if you'd like. Um, but as well, I'll be having um, lots and lots of, I, I will have, Lots of original art from the folks that I work with, and they're pretty great too. So um, don't be shy. I am a very, I was a very shy person at cons, and I never oh. wanted to bother anyone. Oh. Kind of work. Oh. And oh yeah, I it, it, like made me so uncomfortable. Like I just felt mm-hmm. like I was, you know, uh, say something stupid, and, and they would remember for that forever. forever. Yeah. Me. Uh, even though they will never remember me yeah. uh, after having a conversation, um, but but do come to the table. You don't have to buy art. You don't. I don't you know. Like I, I want folks to see mm-hmm. original art. Um, just to celebrate it and to to see what it's like. I think uh, most people haven't seen comic book art before, and it's a yeah, wonderful. Like, opportunity to take a look at a lot yeah, of it. The, like raw pages, they are like like we were saying about Rosemary's art. It's different to see them like their originals versus what you see even on the page so yeah it's a really cool opportunity i yeah. know i like so lost my mind when you're like here's rosemary's art from laura dean and i was like <laughs> at like the summer show no because, yeah right because <laughs> it's, her work is so beautiful and yeah we're very we're very fortunate yes the show the show is, is really a dream come true mm-hmm. so yeah i uh thank you for for chatting yeah thank um, you are there any other events that you're working on at the library you wanted to 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 bring um, up or yes oh yeah that's probably true i should talk about the library events uh so <laughs> the, the library ann arbor district library we're doing events all the time Lots of cool different things. You can check out our website, aadl.org, to see like what's going on. Um, for shows that I'm organizing, my next one up is our hol- holiday craft local artisan market, um, which is November, November, December 9th. <laughs> um, so that's also another big event. It's busy, but it's worth it. I think we find we are able to get a lot of really amazing local artists not necessarily of like 2d art although that's there too but like a huge range of artists that's also super fun and exciting to see um it's i i love seeing what people can make um and that's like a really i think we lost your sound can you still hear me here here i am sorry there you are. Uh, no my phone was like I'm dying. Hurry up. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. All right. Let's but let's uh, we saw right. a little bit of time. Um all this to say, come to Tiny Expo. There's a lot of really amazing talented people. Um and you can do all your holiday not all, but a lot of your holiday shopping local, which is also cool and a good thing you should consider doing with your time and money. All support local artists. Local. Always. Always about the local. And it's amazing. If you want something that is unique. Yes. And, you know, not mass produced, mm-hmm. you know, 
go to these events. And also, and that's, if you I, see something where you're like, this is so close, but I wish it was purple, talk to the artist. Yes. Because they can help you probably. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just going to throw that out yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I commissioned all sorts of, I commissioned a lot of earrings oh, for sure. my spouse okay. over the years. Very, very specific earrings that I've had <laughs> made. It's, it's, um, anyway, your phone's mm -hmm. dying. Uh, mm -hmm. So thank you for chatting. Thank you. Um, thank you. Reminder to folks folks that are, are watching or watching now or um, watching the recording, A2 CAF, Small mm -hmm. and Indie Press is this Saturday. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> Come see set, us. <laughs> uh, it's from 11 to mm -hmm. five. Oh, and um, after the show, one of the artists that I represent, MS Harkness, is doing a reading mm -hmm. at Vault of Midnight, which is right around the, right, well. Right close, around the corner, the yep. Distance, uh, from, the, from the library. It's gonna be amazing. Mm -hmm. MS puts on go. So um, and she has a new book coming out. Um, maybe it's coming out soon mm -hmm. um, from graphics called Time Under Tension. And I mm -hmm. highly recommend that you go to our show first <laughs> and then head over there and have a full day of comics. I think her. I think it starts at maybe seven. Go to the mm -hmm. website. Vault. Vault's an amazing comic shop. Mm -hmm. Check out Vault as well while you're in town. Yes. Oh, seven. Well, no, <laughs> seven thirty. <laughs> Midnight. You prepared for this moment. I get my notes, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Come join us, and it's going to be an amazing mm -hmm. time. And, and thank you, Audrey, for for everything. Oh, um, thank you. This. It's been a pleasure working with you, Same. and uh, we'll do uh, it again. Again. Um, yeah. Yes, that's a whole other thing. We don't have time to talk about, but I already. You know me. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, let's do, this bigger. let's do, let's, let's think about next year. Who are we going to bring in next year? I have some ideas, but we'll keep them secret. For yes, now. for now. Because <laughs> me too. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again. And um, I get, we'll see you on Saturday. Sounds good. See you later, Sean. Bye.